This service station in a canton in Switzerland perfectly epitomizes not just the double displacement of Disneyland, but also and foremost an unquestionable heterotopia pointing to no agreed upon meaningful subtext. There in the middle of the Swiss Alps, there's a fond de siècle interior, a Neapolitan pizzeria, a Greek market, a Viennese patisserie, a Japanese garden, a Victorian conservatory, a chewing gum dispenser, modern supermarket, and middle European street with an Italian bar and a knockoff vintage Scandinavian tiled stove, desperately striving to revive the appeal of that classic German mix and match aesthetic with artificial rocks paving the way towards the lavatories. Here, the newfangled services whose television integrated urinals stream advertisements on both prostate and erectile dysfunctions, stand alongside the overflowing display of fresh vegetables, tropical fruits, and exotic plants that pop out of Sicilian carts. They all add to the uncanny feeling. A Japanese-style winter garden with flower beds envelop the restaurant, the petrol pumps, and the car park and only exacerbate the impossibility of locating oneself within a definitive space-time frame. Now what picks interest here is not so much the coexistence of clashing elements, but the intention of a kind of snowball effect in which the natural environment looks out of place. The snow, the mountains and glaciers, in other words, the wild and sublime view of what used to be the impenetrable threshold of Italy, turn out to be the beefed-up decorative frill with which this microclimatized, self-sufficient biosphere is wallpapered. This paradox is intensified just a few miles away at the thermal baths at Vals, designed by Peter Zumthor and plonked in the middle of what used to be an uncontaminated farmer's village. Here, it's not just the obliteration of nature, pervasively perpetuated, that is striking, but also the impressive sequence of free associations with which the guests describe their own experience. Customer reviews on TripAdvisor, for example, alternate between a building that is a trout breeding farm, or perhaps a monumental cemetery, or a Nazi concentration camp, and the like. Daniel Liebskin, the Polish-American architect in charge of integrating the meaning of the Holocaust into the consciousness of memory in the city of Berlin, might well lament not eliciting this same response in the design of his Jewish museum. Now, it's not just a matter of an unwelcome Bill Bow effect being emulated in the heart of a godforsaken Alpine valley, of the expressions of patent disbelief surfacing on the faces of the affluent customers traveling far and wide to contemplate the ramifications of state-of-the-art well-being. It's not even a matter of feeling ourselves at ease within a non-place such as the Marche Glarnerland, while feeling totally disconnected with Val's thermal baths in its die-hard attempt to reconnect the devotees with their inner selves and that very nature which is so brutally excluded from the premises. It is, rather, a matter of this delusional behavior that we obstinately continue to put right at the center of present architecture. Sugar-coated by media-constructed forms of representation that none of the apologists in charge would ever dream to either certify or worship in the flesh for real. They just act as the Shangri-La or unreachable dimension of current architectural good consciousness. So let's take a look around at these baths. From the dimmed, phantasmatic, minimalist, naked, and retro bulbs hanging sparsely from the ceiling, to the oversized, steampunk-styled and vintage-handled shower chambers, likely extracted from Victor Frankenstein's cabinet, 
from the gargantuan concrete walls that surround a penitentiary recreation courtyard or tepidarium to the Kafkaesque hall where bathers whirl aimlessly like the penitents from Dante's purgatory, from the empty hooks inviting inmates to unrobe before accessing twin-bed marbled mortuary slabs in the steam rooms, to the unfriendly, patronizing, gesticulating, and over-attentive attitude of the staff, which clients, by sheer cinematic effect, turn into extras from a Vietnam POW war scene. From the airless, cramped, oppressive, and inescapable hot water pools, which a Roger Moore-era Bond villain might have vindictively filled with shark assassins, to the high-rise Cold War socialist tower blocks opposite the spa, and whose appearance clients can comfortably contemplate from the chalons tactically arranged before the few openings available in the perimeter. And so, all this is no longer a matter of how bona fide a translation of a top security prison this thermal bath is, nor a matter of conspiracy theories dismissing historical facts as fictions. The abolition of that collective hallucination that architecture first brought to the fore by originating something as spiritual, effinescent, and undetectable as space, this is palpable everywhere. Reflected in reverse, it only pops up, deflated and denuded, of each and every one of its original intentions in this truly and unforeseeably architectural holocaust. That hallucination, which has driven the past and present of historical representation for the last five centuries, is no longer in place. For Val's thermal bath is not just the most beautiful mausoleum dysfunctionally erected, to the life and death of architecture as we know it. It is also the foobar moment of that ambiguous, ambitious, banalized, disconnected, inefficient, misunderstood, and dreamland movement, which is phenomenology and the built environment. And simply by looping into the opposite end of the spectrum on which it was supposed to land, bathe, or die.